Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura, and you're watching Thursday Threads. Today is part three of our storm at sea. We're going to finish that up. Well, before I start, I have to share this with you. When I was a little girl, I, I made my first quilt when I think I was 12. My brother dared me. I won the bet though. And I remember finding a pattern in the newspaper or a magazine and I was wanting to make it and because it was so pretty. Well as I was putting these blocks together I had this deja vu. I, I remember this. We dug through our storage and I found this box back from and wouldn't you know <laughs> Check it out. I had already been starting on it. These are all kinds of scraps from my mom's scrap box. Apparently I was trying to make them. I was cutting out the pieces individually with scissors. This was before I knew about the rotary cutter. And obviously everything is not as not quite as nice as they are now, but I tell you, being 12, 13 years old and attempting this, that was ambitious. But I was wanting it. I've still got all these old fabrics, so this should be fun. This was a nice find. So we've done unit one, unit two, and now we're on the big unit, and then we're going to put it together. When you break it all down into their individual units, easy peasy. Well, it still takes a little bit of work. But what you're going to do with part three. So I am starting out with a four and a half inch square. And that's with my light blue. And we're going to make a square and a square, and I'm going to put the yellow, this golden yellow vine tonal. This is so pretty. And I'm going to put that around making the square and a square. Now, to keep it simple, I'm just going to make some four inch squares out of this. You could use the template with the, the little cuttings and all that, and it's awesome. Oh, it matches, everything matches up so beautifully. But I went the easy, lazy, cheaty route and I just made four inch squares and cut from diagonal to diagonal to make two triangles. And then this should measure, you know, about six and a half inch all the way around. Then I'm going to cut out my blue. I'm going to cut some five inch squares out of this fabric and this is a real pretty blue and blue and gold. Again, I'm just going to take the easy route, corner to corner. So I'm just going to sew those on and then do my other two sides. I'm going to trim it down to eight and a half inches. So remember, you're going to want, you know, your, your quarter inch here at the corners for the points. When we get done, our unit, and this is our unit, will be 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So we've got four and a half by four and a half, four and a half by eight and a half, four and a half by eight and a half, and eight and a half. Okay? And ideally, we get that done, it should all match up beautifully. So let's go ahead and put a couple more sides onto this and see where it takes us. For this unit, I needed about three fourths yard from my blue center about three-fourths yard for my yellow and about two yards for the, the main color, the blue. So when we get done, I've got about three and a half yards of this blue. I have about two and three-fourths yards of the yellow and about one and a quarter yards of my light blue. And that's for doing the three colors in this. 
So let me put some more sides on this. We'll trim it down and then we'll put some together. Again, I want to emphasize, I don't know if it's the right way, the wrong way, the impossible way, the crazy way, probably more likely the crazy way. I'm showing you my way, how I'm doing it. A lot of this, you're going to need to find your own method and find what you're comfortable with. So let's put some more squares on and trim that down. And then let's start putting a block together. As always, I am using my handy dandy quarter inch piecing foot. That is probably one of like my favorite tool. If someone had to ask me what was the one thing I could not do without, it would be that. That just makes things so much easier for me. And you guys, if you've been watching, you know I pin. I pin like crazy. I pin so that I don't, my fabric doesn't slip. Because I know me. So I am going to pin this. You don't have to. You know how you sew, and you know what your weaknesses are. I don't. I know mine. And mine is that I tend to slip. So, I would rather take the extra time and have a good seam, proper, and that, that good quarter inch seam to hold everything together, than for me to you know, not use pins, slip, and then I have to rip. So, I'm using my center stitch. If you find that you are pushing your fabric down into the machine and it's wadding up and knotting, change your needle, okay? I know there are some people, they change it after every project, or they change it every day, different things. You find what you need to do. Uh, but I do find, even in the middle of a project, if my needle gets dull, it'll push the fabric, especially in the corners, down into the machine. So change your needle. Also, if you find that you get a little extra light, this little light is good. It's just like a reading light. Downside is it takes one of those little watch batteries that are so expensive. During the daytime, I'm okay. Nighttime, I really need the extra light. To the end, I'm going to back stitch. Normally, when I'm just sewing, I've got leaders and enders in here. You can check out this other video. You're basically you're making two quilts at a time, and it's wonderful. So we've got my other piece. Let's finish this. All right, so I have finished my square and a square and a square. I'm going to press this down. May not even need to trim this down. And I've had some comments, and by the way, I love the comments, uh, good, bad, or otherwise, where they tell me, you know, hey, we know how to do that. You don't need to, you know, show it to us every time. I like to show the whole project. And I don't show everything every time, but I always think somebody might be new and they might not know this. And again, I just like to show how I do it. Square should be eight and a half. So let's just kind of see. It's it's just about dead on. I have a few little strays here and there that it wouldn't hurt to cut, but I, I think I'm just gonna go with it. So for each unit, you need one and one and then two. Of this one and that's the actual block and obviously when you get to the end of the row or at the bottom you're going to want to add these back to it kind of like what I did up here at the, you know at the top so you're going to want to add another row of this along the bottom and then along the side on your edge putting them together detail 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 So I'm going to put these two together first. And what you're going to look for is where your stitches intersect. You want your seam line to never go below that. Because if you do, you're going to cut off your point. So to make sure I remember, and I'm aware of what I'm doing, 
I'll use a fabric pen and I want to just make sure that I don't go below that and I don't think it matters which one you do it on so let's just do it on both and that's right there and this is a disappearing so that's kind of nice again I pin because this is definitely one I do not want slipping look at that isn't that nice I love it when everything just lines up beautifully, right? I just hope my points are lining up. So I'm actually going to pin that and pin that. And I'm going to take a look at it. So what do y'all think? Obviously my triangle is a different size, but my point should be right on. And if it's not, I'll kind of scooch it, but I think it's good. I definitely want to pin that right there. I do not want that slipping. And you'll see on this side, the pin's going right through my line, right through that line. I'm good to go. So watch that line that we drew as you're sewing it. Because you don't want that to move. And I've told y'all in a previous video how I, I will move my needle. It's still pinned, but it's out of the way of my needle. Because that's another good way for you to get wacky dude stitches. And you really don't want to sew over your needles. All right. All right, so you can see here, I've kind of just a little smidge inwards. Do you know what? I'm okay with that. It's almost like they're just moving right in. So I'm okay. I prefer there to be a little bit more of a point, but I'm okay with it. And then you're just going to do the same thing with these two pieces. Let's see if I can't do a little bit better. Okay, so here we go. This time, I stitched just a little above my mark. So let's see if that makes a difference. And guys, you're going to find you have to adjust. It's all good. Ah, ha, ha, I think that did better. What do you guys think? Let's press it. Well, that didn't work as well as I thought it would. Going a little bit above the line, now I've actually, you know, but you know what? That's okay. This is learning. And that's all that it's about, is we have to learn and don't be afraid. Now, guess what? Now you're just going to finish it off. And you'll have made a block. Obviously, what I'm, what I'm doing is not going to be entered into a quilt show. I did think this would be a good one for me to try because I do have trouble with my points. And every block in here has the points. So by the time I get done, I should be pretty good. And then just easy breezy here on, uh, you know, putting it together. Make sure... Your seams are going the opposite direction right there. I said, and you can feel it just nest in there. That is the first thing I like to do is to get any of my seams matched up. And then I worry about everything else. And don't feel like a failure if the first time you try this, or the second, or the third, or the twentieth time, you still find, oh, I didn't get it. I got it, the, I got it right the last 10 times. How come I can't get it this time? Well, it's just the way it goes sometimes. And where I'm putting, it's a longer piece. I am putting in a lot more pins. Let's see if I can't nail it on this, putting this together. And I also want to emphasize, y'all, I never claimed to be an expert. I'm learning right along with you. Anyone remember any of my first videos? 
you should go back and look at those and a lot of my first ones <laughs> I, I didn't do the face I only did the hands I was only showing you my hands and my sewing machine and I will tell you I am so much better now than I was a couple years ago it takes practice it takes time but you know what even the very best make oopses you know they're not perfect all the time Storm at Sea was published in the Kansas City Star I believe it was in the 20s just somebody look it up and tell me in the comments below all right, so I've got all this pinned. Fingers are crossed. I'm hoping I've done everything right. But if I haven't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. There's plenty of other things for me to worry about. I don't know how many of y'all are on Facebook. But uh, we got started on it because our oldest was a senior in high school. And, you know, we wanted to... I didn't understand. I didn't know what's going on. But it turns out I really like the memories. So like I said, this is... If I get this wrong, this is nothing. Let me tell you about a memory I, I opened up that was eight years ago. My daughter, Shelby. And you can see her in some of my videos. By the way, she does not want to learn to sew. Can you believe that? Guess what? I dulled my needle from... So my memory, back in uh, 2016, she had an issue. And she had woken up and had a fever. She walked into the emergency room. She's six years old. That afternoon, she was in pediatric intensive care in her own room. So let me tell you, I've always thought nurses and doctors were heroes. No question. She had her own nurse in there. They weren't sure she was going to make it. Let me tell you, her seventh birthday was wonderful. It turned out she had a really, uh, really bad case of ulcerative colitis. And she went septic. She would caught a cold. Because she was on all kinds of immunosuppressors to try to keep the bleeding and inflammation down in her bowels. So, she got a cold and she went septic. And it was touch and go. Well, my memory from eight years ago. And that was 2008. So, 2013, actually, uh, 2012, she had her first surgery to remove her colon. Sorry, it was seven years. Eight years ago for the first surgery. And seven years ago, uh, this month, she'd gone in for her second of three surgeries. But I'll tell you. For her seventh birthday, that girl, all she wanted to do was go to the carnival. Now, what she called the carnival was Lake Winnipesoka. So, uh, we went. And, oh, we had a great day. And I remember she was wearing, like, a tank top dress. And she was getting sunburned. And I looked at that, and that, it was one of those things of, I'm a bad mother. She's getting a sunburn. I mean, I put sunscreen on her, but I'm such a bad mother because she's getting a burn. And then it hit me. My baby's getting a sunburn. Isn't that wonderful? She was alive to get a sunburn. Isn't that great? So don't sweat the small stuff. Pick your battles to worry about. My points today, I'm not, not a big thing for me. I want to do as well as I can, but I'm not going to go crazy. Oh, look at that. I think I did a little bit better. What do y'all think? Better? Yeah? Maybe? Still not perfect, but better. I'm a little off center there. Can I move it over? Nope. But I'm okay. Look at that though. You can almost see that point. 
All right, so my third seam today was actually not too bad. A little bit too much base there, but I'm okay. Look at that. Shelby's a senior in high school. She's about to graduate. My boys are juniors. I like this fabric. I'm having a fun time. Hey, life's good. Duh. Really, not much should, should, should shatter me, you know? Been through it. But last time, I would asked for opinions. So, please, opinions. Here we go. And I just pulled these from my stash. I had actually held my fabric up to the computer screen. Got my husband to help me because he's so good with budgeting up colors and complimentary colors. I know, putting them up to the computer screen is, it was the best. Anyway, ordered three different colors. He went to Joanne's and picked it up curbside. Got them home and they were all right. Most of my viewers, they all didn't like any of them. Uh, they said if I had to, it would be this one, but yeah. So, question. With that in mind, what do y'all think? Let's see here. Let's pull this down. So I can do like a pale blue pale mottly blue matches that pretty well I think not sure how I feel about it with the yellow what about this one just going with that color what do y'all think what would you do any other suggestions I would really be interested to hear you what you have to say what color do you think should go on here uh, maybe do this one for a border and this one for the binding? Thoughts? Let me know what you think. Always. I would much prefer to get an honest criticism than a fake compliment. I really would. I'm not perfect. I'm not an expert. I'm learning just like you are. But I am having a blast looking through some uh, Kansas City Star patterns and finding oh that one I did do really well my little corner I think I've got that down pat seeing all the different patterns and trying to learn them I've had a great time with quilt block lottery she did one where it was stars you can see them up there this tulip one that was from quilt block lottery this is my leader and ender uh, project. I've just had a great time with it, and I hope you are too. And I really hope I will see you back here next time on Crazy Dave's Crew. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. Huh? <music>